All right. Uh, good morning, everybody. Good day. So we continue on with our class, and uh, we're gonna move on to the next lecture, which is called structural analysis. So in this uh, lesson, in this lecture, we're going to learn on how to analyze. Uh, moderately complicated structure <clears throat> so you are going to use all the knowledge that you have learned from uh, every single week that you have been learning engineering mechanics so all the knowledge that you have learned from uh, week one two three four five until now you're going to be applying it in structural analysis so uh, we're going to cover uh, on uh, something called planar trusses. So if you look uh, in front of us, uh, you can see a lot of structures. Structures such as roofs and also bridges, they will use something called trusses. So planar trusses are trusses in one uh, plane. So these trusses, it has members. For example, right now, we're looking at a three-member truss. So this is a truss, and this one, uh, you have one member, two member, and three member. So this is the simplest kind of truss, which is still very rigid. So all trusses has to be rigid, and it cannot uh, collapse under any sort of load. You can see here, this is uh, some sort of a bridge truss. So for example, here you've got uh, some sort of reaction force from a pin joint probably. These are all your loads. These are all your loads. This one is support reaction uh, for probably some sort of roller. So this is uh, what's happening in a bridge. So if you look at all these connection points, for example this one, this is the enlarged view. So you've got uh, members. For example, this one, you have four members. One, two, three, four. All these members, they are uh, joined together with something called a gusset plate. So this is what we call a gusset plate. How does it spell? Gusset plate. Sometimes you will uh, join all these things with uh, pins. So this is pins. But uh, in both cases, we're going to analyze them similarly. We're going to treat the whole thing as one single particle. So one single point. So look at more, more structures. So you've got a roof. This is probably the roof that you are living under right now so you've got roof trusses uh, main beam and then you have one horizontal beams and you have your stiffening beams all this beam will stiffen the planar truss so the loads are typically uh, applied to the joints I know there are loads from the weight which is on to the beam itself. But uh, in terms of our calculation for this class, we will only analyze, we will transfer the load to the joints only. So this is the join, this is the join. All the loads are at the joints only. Why? Because it's a simple way for you guys to analyze manually using uh, manual calculation. So, these are the assumption of the design. All the loadings are applied to the joint. And the weight of the members are pretty much neglected. The weight of this uh, particular beam, it's neglected. We take into account the weight of the roof. The roof is very heavy. If you look at your house roof, how does it look like? Eh? Probably something like this. So, this is your house roof. It can be made of uh, concrete. It can be made out of clay, 
so this single roof element is quite heavy if you take a look at it it's probably gonna weigh about two kilo yeah one to two kilo so if you imagine your roof you're gonna have rows and rows and rows of all these heavy things so probably you're gonna get <coughs> like 200 of this 200 of roof materials multiply by 2 kilo so what do you get 4000 kilograms so 4000 kilogram is actually the weight of four cars your car is typically weigh about 1000 kilo so you have four of those on top of your roof and every single one of those things they are being held together by all these uh, roof trusses. So if you remember, if you look at roof, uh, roof elements, uh, typically they're going to be using some sort of channels. So probably some C channels or rectangular shapes. Sometimes, uh, but not all the time, you have I beams, H beams, uh, L, L brackets. No, L channels. So these are channels, so it has a depth. And it's very long. Uh. All this thing has depth. So this one all has depth. Okay. So they join all these things together and they create very complex and complicated structure. So yeah, pretty much. So if you look at a very complicated structure like this, this is a bridge. So you've got uh, loads on it. And uh, this bridge is definitely not two dimensional only. This bridge is uh, structurally sound in three dimensions. You've got uh, all these gusset plates holding them together. And you've got these horizontal members to uh, stiffen the structure and if you look at it, it in simple way this is the shape of the bridge in 3d so all these members when you analyze them you're gonna see uh, whether the loading is in tension or whether it is in compression so when your member is in tension if you look at here this is a member you have two forces, one going out and the other one going out also. So both forces are going out. So your member is in tension. So obviously this T is equivalent to the bottom T. Lah. So it's the same. Otherwise it will not be statically in equilibrium. So if you take a look at the section view of this thing, this is the section view you're going to see a force in the opposite direction also. So similarly for compressive elements, if you look here, your member should be in compression. So if you take the cross section of the member, it's also in compression. So uh, this is very important. Important. So it's important to note when you're looking at, uh, when we are analyzing, we will be analyzing at the joints. So these are joints. For example, this is probably an A joint. So this, at this A joint, if the member is in compression, the member will have compressive force like that. But when it goes to the joint, it will be a force going in. And similarly, if you look at tension, um, okay. So similarly, if you look at uh, tension, the member will go in uh, outer way like that. But when you look at the joint, it will be going out. So you cannot confuse yourself with. Uh, when you are analyzing, when you're looking at the member itself, this is the member free body diagram. 
This is another free body diagram. This is a separate body one free body diagram and this is another one so you've got a lot of uh, bodies here at location A you have the join A at members you've got a different one this one also a different one so <coughs> this is how you denote it so when you analyze you will be analyzing the joins itself you will be analyzing the joins so all you mention will point yourself to the joint and you'll need to uh, figure out what are the uh, condition of your members whether it is in compressive or tensile so <clears throat> there are a lot of uh, commonly used trusses for example this one is a Pratt named after the inventor uh, this is Howie this is Warren this is K so these are bridge trusses and this one is uh, roof trusses so there will be some sort of um, typical designs that uh, structural engineers use that was deemed to be safe so they will choose this particular designs based on their ap different applications okay so now we're going to be learning uh, something called method of joints so in this course you will be learning uh, only one method lah. there are two methods actually there are method of joints and they are method of sections you can use either one actually but I feel that uh, this method of join is somewhat more simple and it's easier for you guys to to use in any analysis so typically I would uh, say there are f six yeah there are six steps steps there are six steps um, as listed here so let's let's go let's go on so number one you need to draw something called uh, an external free body diagram so you need to draw an external free body diagram there's no need to go um, internally so even though your structure is very complicated like this you only have to draw something like this you don't need to draw the internal members no there's no need to do that yet just draw the external afterwards you need to solve equilibrium of rigid body so this one you have uh, the technology and knowledge on how to do it already solve your free body diagram label all the forces involved what are the external force and solve it uh, as much as you can so if you cannot solve all the unknowns yeah it's okay never mind just solve whatever you can so these two steps you have learned before we will be learning something new on the next steps so the remaining four steps is what's uh, what's new in this chapter next one you'll be drawing the internal free body diagram so now you need to draw all the members forces uh, this is a simple one yeah for example this one just now you draw external right all the reaction forces then you need to break it up into joints and members so when I say internal force free body diagram it will be divided into two things lah. you have I'm going to delete this one so you're gonna have members and you're gonna have joints so this is what's new new so here look at me look at this picture you've got members and you've got uh, lots of joints 
oops delete joins j o i n t s so you've got joins you've got members so you have to draw it uh you have to give some spacing these are space you need to draw all these uh, arrows so you have to give it some space lah. and then you solve equilibrium at joints so when you're solving equilibrium at joints you're practically doing uh, 2d equilibrium you've learned this before or uh, summation of forces in x summation of forces in y so solved 2d 2d joints which you have learned i think in week three probably next you fill in the blanks with all the unknown forces and then you label whether your members are in tension or compression so what you're trying to do is actually you're trying to determine which one is tension if it's tension how many force in this case you've got 500 newton <coughs> This member is in a compression. If it's compression, what is the force? In this case, it is 707. So once you've got all the members' uh, forces and you've got all the members' states, so when I say state, it means uh, either tension or compression, then you're done. You're good to go. So, next. So this is looking at uh, some... Uh, Typical structure that you're going to see, for example, this one, yeah, this is the problem. This is the question. This is step number one. You do external free body diagram, right? External FBD. And then number two, you solve it. So once you've solved it, what else? Huh? Draw internal free body diagram. Uh, this is drawing internal free body diagram. Once you've drawn internal free body diagram, you choose which join is the easiest to be solved. So this is step number four. Lah. Solving joins. Am I correct? Step number four. Stel solve equilibrium of the joints. Once you solve the joints, you have to fill in the blanks, right? Fill in the blanks of unknown forces. Put all these values. For example, I'm looking at picture number one here. This is actually where? This is actually join A. Am I right? Yeah, so this is join A. Join A is labeled here. Once you solve, you get this. This is the thing that you get. You need to copy this value, copy, and then what do you do? You go over here, and then you paste. So this is the uh, values that you get at location A, join A. And apparently, uh, you solve the location which is easiest first. <clears throat> so, once location A is done, move on. Let's move on to the location which is next easiest. So, this guy goes to location uh, join F, which is here. So, this is what he has uh, solved. This one. So, copy, paste. Paste this here. So all this information is at the joint. But if you look at the beam, it's a different story, okay? So let's not get confused. This is the beam. Uh, this is the beam. Judging by the look of this, it looks like as if this beam is having tension, right? It looks like it, but it may be not the case. If you look at joint A, the force is going this way. There's going to be 
a force in the opposite direction. Same case for this one. This force is this way. It's going to be a force in this uh, different direction. So it's not actually not tension. It's actually compress. So we have to be very careful when we put our values here. This arrow looks like it's compressing this this particular beam. But that's not really the case. If you draw uh, this beam here, you're going to see it differently. This will be another force like this. And there will be another force like this. So this particular beam, uh, which is uh, beam B E, is actually tension. Uh, so you have to be very careful. This B E is actually tension. We'll get to this later on. So once you've done all this and then you have uh, settled all the things, we are done. So we, our job is to find out all information. Find out all the information on the structure itself. So this is what it's called the method of joints. You are actually solving all the joints. So once you get info on the joints, you can uh, move on and find out what are the values at the members. Okay, next. This is uh, the most simple example ever, which is uh, thrust in its most simple form. Most simple, why is it most simple? Because it has the minimum of three. So you cannot have a member with two only members lah, unless you design it. Uh, differently. Actually, you can have three, two members. But this one, one of the simplest one, uh, three, three thrusts. Okay, step number one. <coughs> what do you do? Draw a free body diagram, and then solve for external. In this case, I have labeled AX. Going to the right, uh, never mind. I think we're going to get a negative if this one is uh, going to the right. Look at here, 500 is going to the right already. If you want to get a positive value, you should draw this one, this arrow to the other side. To the left, opposite to 500 direction. AY, I think is okay. Uh, CX, this one is wrong, right? You have to draw it like this. So let's modify that a bit. Keep your ink annotation. Mm. This card, uh, keep lah. So let's modify this one. It's actually the other way around, right? It should be like that. Yeah, it should be like this. <clears throat> AX, yeah, let's see. Um, so solving it, you can even jump at uh, joints immediately. This uh, is this guy jumping and solving the joints equation already so what he does is you draw <coughs> a single point b maybe you should uh, draw it to you first huh? okay let's settle this manually first <coughs> so that you guys can really really see it let's say i want to solve joint b by right, I should not be doing this yet. Nah. By right, yeah. Let's solve this properly. By right, I should be solving uh, 
equilibrium of rigid body first. Solve equilibrium of <coughs> rigid body. Meaning, I have to solve summation fx is equal to 0. Okay, let's do this. When we're doing this, you have to look at this one. Lah. You have to look at this free body diagram. Okay, let's solve it properly first. Summation fx is equal to 0. Never mind. This AX, I assume it to be on the right hand side. It's okay. Never mind. Leave it be. So, I'm sure you have, um, you know how to, to do this already. We have learned this last week. Summation FX is equal to 0. So, 500, this force. And then you got plus AX which is this force and then what else that's it is that it is there anything else there's nothing else so this one is equal to zero <coughs> so immediately you're gonna get ax is equal to negative 500 newton c opposite negative direction why so this direction has to be opposite but leave it there Next, you solve summation Fy equals 0. Yeah, look at this one. Ay, Ay going up. Ay naik atas. And then what else? Cx plus Cx is equal to 0. Ay <coughs> plus Cx is equal to zero okay is everybody okay can we solve this hmm it seems like there's nothing you can do because we don't have any information in the y direction so leave it be next we can solve moment summation of moment at location which is a lot of unknown which is a lah, is equal to zero Counterclockwise is a positive. You are here, right? Location A. So you have CX. CX going this way. <coughs> so this one is a positive. CX kali dengan dua. Alright. Yeah. Minus 500 is going this way. It's a negative. 500 kali dengan berapa? 2 also. Is there anything else? No more. AX and AY does not contribute to the rotation. So this one equals 0. So you're going to get CX is equal to to, to cancel equal 500. 500 Newton. Hmm. So, kamu boleh solve ini. <coughs> CX 500. AY dapat no? Okay. Uh, from here, plug in CX. I just cannot see. CX. Plug in here. So, once you plug in here 500, AY is sama dengan berapa? 500. Negative 500 Newton. Okay. Negative 500 Newton. So now, uh, what are the values that you have solved? You have solved the equilibrium of rigid body. So you get these values. AX sama dengan ni. AY sama dengan ni. CX sama dengan ni. <coughs> now, you draw a proper free body diagram. So the free body diagram has been changed. So this is the free body diagram. 
Okay, CX, let's put the value. Proper 500 eh. CX 500. AY, negative. So it's the opposite direction, okay? AX put negative, the opposite direction. So now you're going to draw a free body diagram, but on the internal. So when you're drawing the internal free body diagram, it's slightly more complicated. Lah. Why? What color I'm going to use? Huh? Blue? <laughs> okay, let's, let's choose blue. So your internal free body diagram becomes like this. This is a joint. This is another joint. This is another joint. Like that. And then you've got members. Member is like that. Just draw a small one. Small rectangular like that. Ah, this is an internal free body diagram. Now, label all forces. Important is correctly. Important Correctly means correct direction. Correct di direction. <laughs> so 500. The question is already 500. Just leave it at there. What else? CX 500 eh? So CX is like this. Just put 500. AX should be on the opposite direction. Am I right? Because AX here, you get negative 100, right? Your assumption should be reversed. So you label here, 500 Newton. What else? AY? AY patutnya arah terbalik, eh? Macam tu. 500 Newton. So, <coughs> this is your... Uh, internal free body diagram what you're doing right now is internal free body diagram remember it has two things joints and it has to have members two things joints and members so next you should go to solving joints right if you look at a uh, simple join, so I guess uh, I guess I have to rub <laughs> some places, uh, So this one you're done, right? So you have to solve joints. Yeah, I'm gonna have to rub this one. I think you're okay. I'm gonna look at joints right now. So this one. This one you're okay already, right? You don't have to rub on your own, lah. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to be looking at joints. <coughs> so what joint is the easiest to look at? How many joints do I have? I have three joints only. I have A joint. C join and B join. Three joints. So choose the joint with the uh, most amount of not, uh, of um, information. So the best joint with a lot of information. So let's let's take a look at this. So you've got joint. A, you've got join B, you've got join C. So this is very important also. Here there will be some some sort of forces. These are uh, forces. Okay, there will be forces here. This one. This one will be forces, but you don't know the direction, you don't know the value. But you know there are forces to fill in, but you don't know yet. So join A, you're gonna get something like 
two unknown and known and two known betul tak? dua dah tahu, dua tak tahu lagi join B dua un B kat mana? kat atas eh B kat atas this is join B ini join apa? A ini join apa? C two unknown B du bukan satu je unknown kan? eh betul lah dua unknown B dua unknown satu known join C dua unknown satu known so normally bila kita nak pilih join mana kita nak settle kita akan pilih join paling banyak uh, kita tahu lah which is this one dua known dua unknown hmm, cari paling banyak dua, yang banyak known dua known dua unknown ok lah ni paling bagus lah so choose A first lah so solve A first so join A so look at join A if you look at join A it's super easy lah you don't have to calculate so you know ini kanan kan 500 kan 500 newton ini apa 500 newton ini patutnya kita kena bagi value lah ini nama dia adalah F A C tengok ni A C uh, dan atas ni F apa nama dia A B so ada dua benda tak tahu F A C dengan F A B so you don't know two things lah so in order to solve this, if you want to go schema, you just have to solve like summation fx equals 0 <coughs> to the right is positive if you want to go schematic lah kan. So look at this one. This is horizontal. FAC. Kanan. Tolak 500. Kiri equal zero. So FAC sama dengan 500 Newton. So dapatlah value. But you don't have to do this right. If you look at this, kiri 500, kanan mestilah 500 right. So you can solve it using this way also. But uh, systematically you have to solve this way lah. So summation FY equal zero. Same thing that you do. F. Okay. Going up is positive. F A B. Minus 500. F A B naik atas. Turun bawah 500 is equal to 0. So F A B. Equals. 500 Newton. So you know two things already. This one you know is 500 Newton and this one you know is 500 Newton. Both are positive. So you know this one, you need to copy this one, copy and paste here. <coughs> so now you plug in the values. So when you plug in the values, Make sure you do like this and like this. You're solving join here. So when you solve like this and uh, the value is you know already, yeah, 500. This one also will be like this. If that one is like that, you can solve all the all the member so this one will also definitely be like this this one like this sebabnya 500 kan ini 500 opposite direction ni pun 500 juga so when this is going this way this one is also going this way this one is also 500 
So you have to draw opposite direction. You don't do like this, okay? Don't do like uh, don't do like this. Join 500 like this. You cannot have something like this. No wrong. No, this is a join. You have arrow going out. Another arrow going out. No, cannot. It has to be opposite direction. So this is wrong. Follow this one. This one is correct. This one wrong. So if 500 is going uh, that way already, this one also uh, opposite direction. 500. How about this one? This one also going out. This one goes like this. 500 Newton already. So, by solving join A, you have solved two members. So you can settle the horizontal member all and vertical member all. So you almost uh, solved your teka teki, isi tempat kosong. You only need to solve uh, two more joins. Or actually no. If you solve one more join and the whole story is done. So join A does settle. So look at join B dengan join C sekarang. Dia punya status dah berubah. Join B ada berapa unknown? Join B. Look at join B. Here is join B. Here is join B. Here, here. Look at here. Join B. You have one unknown. How many knowns? Two knowns. Join C. One unknown. Two knowns. So status is sama. Boleh buat dua-dua. Boleh settlekan B, boleh settlekan C. Either one is okay. So take whichever you want. So let's say I want to take join C. So I'm going to settle join C lah. So let's settle join C. <coughs> so I'm going to write here join C. So draw the join C. This is your join C. It's like that. There's a 500 Newton. There's a force going this way. 500 Newton. And there's one unknown force. Nama unknown force ni adalah F C B. C B. And you don't know this, uh, this F C B. You don't know, right? But you know this one is 45 degrees. Uh, this is the solving of joints that you can uh, you have learned long time ago. So, solve it uh, systematically. Lah. Summation fx is equal to 0. Y it is 0. It is statically in equilibrium. Nothing is moving. It is in static equilibrium. We are taking convention to the right is positive. This is going left. Put a negative. Negative 500. FCB. Uh, kiri dek. So to the left. Negative. FCB. Cos. 45 degrees. Is equal to 0. So settle this one. Uh, negative FCB kali 0 0.7071 is equal to 500. Settle punya settle. Dapat value. Berapa value dia? FCB equals use your calculator. Okay. 500 bahagi. 0.7071 So, dapat jawapan lah. And the other one, then the jawapan is negative. 707.1 Newton. This is the answer. So, obviously, 
uh, look at our initial assumption. When you assume in the initially, you just put uh, going out. It's easier that way. But when you have analyzed, you get a value of negative 707, right? So you just have to you have just have to correct this one. So it's actually not going out. It's actually going in. So this is the this is the wrong one. Let's draw a correct one. This is this is your join. 500 kiri betul. Sama lah kan. Uh, going up, it's another 500 newton. But this one is actually going in. And the value is now becomes. Uh, once you have corrected the direction, right? Once you have reversed the direction, the value does not become negative anymore. You remove the negative. If like this, you want to label it's negative lah. Uh, but the direction is uh, wrong. Once you have corrected everything, you do not have to put a negative anymore. This is the correct one. So now, take this correct one, put inside your main internal free body diagram. Okay, so now let's copy this one and then what do we do? We have to paste here. Paste. So let's paste the thing. So remove this one, remove this one. Let's put it properly. The labels. So it's actually a force going this way. And this one has to be this way. 707.1 seven Newton. 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 Okay. 707.1. Seven so force the arrow macam ni kan? It's going inside the beam. So you cannot draw something like this. You cannot draw a force in the same direction. If this force is the same direction, this whole beam will fly away. Fly. But that's not the case, right? This thing does not fly away. This direction is wrong. It is static. It's not moving anywhere. So what you should do is, it has to be in the opposite direction. Opposite direction. If this arrow is like this, this arrow has to be like that. And this arrow has to be again in the opposite direction. And the value will be 707.1 Newton. So once you've got all that done, now you can label. Lah. Now you can justify the values. This one is being compressed, so you can label C. Compression. This one, tension, T. Tension. This one is also T. Tension. So once you've done all this, finally, <coughs> you can do some conclusion. What we should do now is conclusion. So when we look at conclusion, probably you're going to look at uh, maximum value and minimum value. So let's say you need to design a simple structure like this. This simple structure. Eh? Let me clear this thing up. So this is a simple structure. Um, you need to use... So once you have analyzed, you find out, oh, this one is actually 707 and it is actually compressive. This one is actually 500 only and tension. This one also 500. 
uh, tension also. So maximum is this one lah, which is 700. So 700 is, is the maximum value. So when you design this thing, for example, you want to buy a single L channel, very long one. So you will not be used, uh, you get one single long channel and then what do you do? You cut them out, right? You cut them into three three separate pieces. And then you join them to make it uh, <coughs> one <coughs> plana trusses. So you have to buy, let's say you are using L channel, L channel like this. Choose the one that can withstand 700 lah, which is the maximum value. You cannot choose something that withstand only 500 Newton. If you choose uh, 500 Newton and when you use it at the 700 Newton punya beam, you're going to have problems. So conclusions, you're going to be looking at maximum values and minimum values and the states. Whether it is in compressive or whether it is in uh, tension. So on a side note, hmm, tension and compression, <coughs> something that you have to uh, consider also. If you're dealing with structural members, I'm going to roll a few things here. Too bad we have a small screen on a side note. So let's, let's consider something. Mm. Let's say if you're looking at steel. Okay. Steel. I'm going to take a different color. Steel. Steel uh, is good in tension. <clears throat> it's actually very bad. Bad in compress. So good in tension, bad in compression. You can have a very thin wire, right? Thin wire of steel. It can still handle a lot of uh, force. But if this thin wire, you give it compressive force, then it's gone. <coughs> So, if you're looking at steel, uh, that's the case. Lah. But, if you look at uh, other uh, structural things, uh, for example, concrete. Concrete is actually good in compress. You can compress a concrete and you can take a very huge load. But it is very bad in uh, tension or bending. Uh, concrete cannot handle tension and bending. So what do structural engineers do when they are building uh, concrete? This is, this is concrete. And at the inside of that concrete, what do they put? They put uh, rebars. Rebar ni adalah structural member lah, metal. This rebar, they, they put... Uh, rebar ni apa dia? In bahasa Melayu, it's actually... Cerucuk lah, we call it. Cerucuk. Rebar, it's actually rebar. Which is essentially metal beams lah. So... The metal beams will tackle uh, tension and the concrete will handle compression. So you've got very strong structural member and you can build a very big house, very big building. So this is it <clears throat> for a very simple uh, structural analysis. So you can look at the answer uh, over here. 
by then it will not be the same lah like what we do lah. so finally this is the answer lah. so the most important thing is for you guys to produce this one we want to look at uh, which one is compression, which one is tension, which one is tension, what are the values. Yeah, this is the one that you are looking at. Uh. This is what we want. Internal force free body diagram. Okay, so let's have a break of 5 minutes. Uh, keep 